Hello everyone. Information box ticket lifestyles brings you today microbiology topic on instrumentation autoclave its definition components operation types and applications. But first don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. So the table of content includes definition its components principle or working behind the autoclave procedure for running an autoclave types of autoclaves the applications of autoclave and precautions let's begin with the definition of autoclave it is a device that provides a physical way of sterilization by using steam under pressure to destroy bacteria viruses or even spores that are present in the material that is placed inside the autoclave by heating the materials to a specified temperature for a set amount of time, an autoclave sterilizes the materials. The autoclave, which is also known as steam sterilizer, is frequently used in healthcare institutions and other commercial settings for a variety of functions. Because it relies on moist heat treatment, the autoclave is regarded as a most efficient sanitation technique. Let's head to the autoclave parts or components. As you can see with this diagram, the pressure cooker type or laboratory tabled autoclaves are most basic types of autoclaves. The various elements and components of an autoclave are described. First we have pressure chamber. A steam autoclave's pressure chamber which consists of an interior room and an outer jacket is its primary part. The outer compartment is made of an iron case and the interior chamber is made of stainless steel or gun metal. In order to speed up the time it takes to achieve the sterilization temperature, the autoclaves used in medical labs have an outer jacket that is filled with vapors. The items that needed to be sterilized are placed in the interior compartment. The pressure container can be 100 liter to 3000 liter in capacity. Then comes the lid or the door. The autoclave cover or entrance is the next crucial part of an autoclave. The lid's job is to isolate the sterilizer from the outside environment and maintain a clean environment inside. The abistose washer and screw fasteners seal the top against airflow. Other parts of the top include things like number 1 pressure gauze an autoclave cover pressure indicator is present to show the pressure generated inside the autoclave during sterilization. The pressure indicator is crucial because it is guaranteed to both the operational's readiness and the safety of the sterilizer. Number 2. Pressure Releasing Unit or Whistle Similar to a pressure cooker, an autoclave has a bell on the top. By rising itself, the whistle releases a certain quantity of vapor which lowers the pressure inside the cylinder. And number 3. Safety Valve The autoclave's cover has a safety button, which is essential in situations where the appliance fails to function as intended or the pressure inside builds up suddenly. A thin coating of rubber covering the valve's interior buds on its own to reveal pressure and prevents an explosion. Number 3. Steam Generator or Electrical Heater Underneath the chamber is an electrical steam generator or boiler that heats the water and produces steam in both the interior and exterior chambers using an electric heating system. The amount of water in the interior compartment is crucial because if there is not enough water, there is a risk of the heating system burning. Similarly, if there is more water present inside the chamber than is required, it might conflict with the trays and other items there. Number 4. Vacuum Generator, if applicable. Some types of autoclaves have a distinct vacuum generator that removes air from the interior of the chamber to produce a vacuum there. Different microbes may be able to strive in the chamber because it has some air spaces. Pressure compartment is a crucial part of an autoclave because of this. And lastly, wastewater cooler. 
A common feature of autoclaves is a device for cooling effluent before it reaches the draining pipelines. Due to the boiling water being sent out of the autoclave, this method avoids any harm to the drainage line. Kindly show your support by subscribing to my channel. Now let's dive into the autoclave principle or working. With the help of this diagram, you will understand the principle or working of the autoclave. The autoclave uses the moist heat treatment method in which the substances inside the cylinder is sterilized by steam applied under pressure. The high pressure rises the boiling point of water allowing for a greater cleaning temperature to be reached. Under 760 mm of mercury of standard air pressure, water typically boils at a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. However, the boiling point of water rises when the pressure is raised. Additionally, moisture in the vapor causes the coagulation of proteins which results in a permanent loss of function and activity of microbes. High pressure also makes it easier for heat to quickly penetrate deeper layers of a substance. This theory is used in a sterilizer where the water boils at 121 degrees Celsius under 15 pounds of pressure. In an autoclave where water boils at 100 21 degrees Celsius and 15 pascals or 775 millimeters of mercury of pressure this concept is used. This vapor emits latent heat when it comes into touch with the surface which destroys the microbes. The wet destruction of the microorganisms is ensured by the condensed liquid. The air inside the compartment is released through the vessels once the sterilization process is finished, which will rely on the degree of contamination of the substance inside. The components inside the container then continue to heat up for a while as this pressure is then returned to the atmospheric pressure. Now let's see the procedure for running an autoclave. Typically, an autoclave runs for at least 30 minutes at a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius while using full steam at a minimum pressure of 15 psi. The procedures to be taken when operating a sterilizer are as follow. Number 1. It is advisable to inspect the autoclave for any remnant of the prior operation before using it. Number 2. After that, the compartment is filled with enough water. Number 3. The container is now filled with the items to be disinfected. Number 4. Following the closure of the cover and tightening of the fastens to ensure air tightness, the electric heater is turned on. Number 5. To keep the necessary pressure in the chamber, the safety valves are changed. Number 6. When the water inside the chamber reaches a rolling boil, the air-water combination is permitted to pass through the discharge conduct, dislodging all of the air inside. When the water bubble stops coming out of the conduct, the full displacement can be assured. Number 7. The drainage pipe is then sealed, allowing the internal steam to build to appropriate amounts. Number 8. The whistle sounds to release extra pressure from the chamber once the desired pressure has been achieved. Number 9. The autoclave runs for a holding time after the whistle, which is typically 15 minutes. Number 10. The autoclave is now permitted to cool and the electric heater is turned off once the pressure goes shows that the internal pressure has reached atmospheric pressure. Number 11. After that, the output line is released to let outside air into the autoclave. Number 12. The lid is then lifted, allowing the sterilized items to be removed from the compartment. Now let's see the types of autoclave. There are several different types of autoclaves available on the market including pressure cooker type, which is laboratory bench autoclaves and type. There are still many places in the world where people use these as household pressure cookers. A rubber gasset can be used to attach and close the more contemporary version which has a metal compartment with a secure metal top. It has a safety valve, pressure monitor and a tap for steam and air release. At the bottom of the container is an electric emergent warmer. 
Next come the gravity displacement type autoclave. This is the sterilizer that is most frequently used in labs. In this kind of autoclave, the heating device creates steams inside the chamber which circulates throughout the room for sterilization. Comparatively speaking, this kind of sterilizer is less expensive than others. Next is positive pressure displacement type, B type. In the case of this type of autoclave, the steam is produced in a different steam generator and then introduced into the autoclave. This autoclave is quicker because the steam can be produced in just a few seconds. Compared to gravity displacement autoclaves, this variety is an upgrade. Lastly, negative pressure displacement type, S type. A steam engine and a vacuum generator are both present in this type of sterilizer. Here, the steam generator produces steam while the vacuum generator removes all of the air from the sterilizer. The sterilizer is then filled with vapor. This autoclave variety is the most frequently advised because it is highly accurate and gets a high degree of sterility guarantee. This form of autoclave is also the most costly. Now let's head to the applications or uses of autoclave. Since materials holding water cannot be sanitized using dry heat sterilization, autoclaves are crucial tools to guarantee the sterilization of those materials. Additionally, autoclaves serve a number of other functions. They are used to sanitize scientific equipments, sterilize media and decontaminate particular biological debris. Number 2. Before disposal, it is advised to autoclave regulated medical debris that may contain germs, viruses, and other biological materials. Number 3. Autoclaves are used in medical laboratories to sterilize medical waste, glassware, surgical instruments, and equipments. Similar to this, pipette tips, plastic tubes, autoclavable receptacles, and growth media are all sterilized in autoclaves. Now let's see the precautions. Although the autoclaves are fairly easy to use, there are few guidelines and safety measures that must be taken. Following some crucial safety measures when using a sterilizer includes Number 1. Autoclaves should not be used to sterilize waterproof or water resistant things like grease or powders. Number 2. The materials should be put into the autoclave so that the steam can reach all of the objects inside without overcrowding it. Number 3. Always put the things to be autoclaved in a secondary receptacle. Number 4. To autoclave package refuse, only autoclavable containers are permitted. Number 5. Articles should be covered in materials that allow for steam entry in order to guarantee adequate penetration. Materials like aluminium foil should not be used. Number 6. The chamber's tops or sides shouldn't be touched by the objects that are put inside. Number 7. Separate autoclaving should be done for the clean objects and residues. Number 8. Never try to assess the cover of the autoclave while it is running. Number 9. Never autoclave liquid components in enclosed vessels. Number 10. To avoid spilling the liquid, only two-thirds of the capacity of receptacles should be filled with the liquid. Number 11. You shouldn't use plastic or polyethylene plates or receptacles because they could melt and harm the sterilizer. Number 12. Additionally, never microwave tissue with paraffin embedded in it, domestic chlorine or any other flammable reactive poisonous or radioactive materials. And lastly, number three, being a flammable material, paper shouldn't be put immediately inside an autoclave. To avoid conflagration, it should be autoclaved in a waste bag using a bio bag option. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to support this channel by liking this video, subscribing to my channel and pressing the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you.